Hi everyone, I'm Yang Xiao. Today I'm going to introduce our work, MVP, Detecting Vulnerability Using Package Enhanced Vulnerability Signature. Vulnerabilities can be exploited to attack software systems. Besides, due to reusing code base or sharing code logic in software systems, recurring vulnerabilities, which share the similar characteristics with each other, widely exist but remain undetected. A general idea to detect recurring vulnerabilities is to match the source code of a target system with known vulnerabilities. We classify these approaches into clone-based and function matching-based. Take the case in this slide as an example. The first row is a patch for CVE 2017-14041. It fixes a format string vulnerability. The second row is a part of vulnerable function, and the last row is a part of a target function, detected as vulnerable by our tool, whose file path is different with vulnerable function. As we can see, the difference between vulnerable function and target function is the order of line 8 to 10. In fact, the vulnerability isn't affected by the difference. Redebug take line 5 to 8, line 6 to 9, and line 7 to 10 in certain rules as vulnerability signature, while VADI takes all statements in vulnerable function as signature. Therefore, they both fail to find the target function. Besides, function matching based approaches such as SOCC and CC aligner cannot distinguish vulnerable function and patch function. What's more, we investigate the similarity among vulnerable function, patch function, and target function to illustrate the problem of existing approaches. When some VP is large, existing approaches can introduce high false positives. On the other hand, when some VP is small, existing approaches may introduce high false negatives. In summary, there are two main challenges in detect detecting recurring vulnerabilities with both low false positives and low false negatives. The first challenge is how to distinguish already patched vulnerabilities to reduce the false positives. The second challenge is to how to precisely generate the signature of a known vulnerability to reduce both false positives and false negatives. To address the two challenges, we propose MVP. Specifically, to address the first challenge, we not only generate a vulnerability signature, but also a patch signature to capture how a vulnerability is caused and fixed. To address the second challenge, we propose a novel slicing method to extract only vulnerability-related and patch-related statements to generate vulnerability and patch signatures at both syntactic and semantic level. Besides, we apply statement abstraction and entropy based statement selection to further improve the accuracy of MVP. This figure shows the overview of MVP, which contains three modules. The extracting function signature module takes a text system as an input and generates a signature for each function in the text system. The extracting vulnerability and patch signatures module takes a security patch as an input and generates a vulnerability signature and a patch signature. The final detecting vulnerability module determines whether each function in the text system is potentially vulnerable or not. In the extracting function signature module, we extract the syntactic and semantic, semantic feature for each type function in three steps. Passing and analyzing function, abstracting and normalizing function, generating function signature. As developers may reuse code snips with renamed parameters variables, we perform abstraction to each function to avoid false negatives. After abstraction, we apply 
normalization to its statement. The syntactic signature of a function is represented as a set of computed hash values of statement. The semantic signature of a function is represented as a set of extracted dependencies. Given the function code in Fig A, Fig B is a result after abstraction. Fig C is a result of normalization. Fig D gives the function signature where line 1 to 8 reports syntactic feature, and line 10 to 13 reports semantic, semantic feature. There are three sub-modules in extracting vulnerability and the patch signature module. Identifying code changes, computing slides to change the fun code, and generating vulnerability and patch signatures. For identifying code changes, we first need to identify the code change the files, change the function, and change the statements. Neither the change the statements alone nor all the statements in change the functions can precisely capture how a vulnerability is caused in the fix. Intuitively, slicing techniques can be used to include the relevant statements and include irrelevant statements. For example, we set the edit statement at line 18 as a slicing criterion. The result of backward slicing include line 6, 11, and 13. The result of forward slicing include the statements at line 19 to 40. As we can see, when a conditional statement is set as a slicing criteria, the result of forward slicing could contain too many statements where some of them are noisy as they are not relevant related to the vulnerability. To address this problem, we propose a novel slicing method to better capture a vulnerability with less noise than traditional slicing methods. In detail, we said each change the statement as a slicing criteria and perform normal backward slicing on the PDG and perform custom as forward slicing according to different statement types of the slicing criteria. We classify the statement into four types. Take the case in the right figure as an example. We said VDVID in the statement at line 18 as the slicing criteria. The result of backward slash slicing includes line 5, 11, and 13. When perform forward slicing, the direct source for the used local variable VDVID at line 18 is line 11. Then we set each statement in the previous backward slicing result as a slicing criteria and perform normal forward slicing on data dependencies graph. The result of forward slicing on 11 includes line 18, 19, 28, and so on. For generating vulnerability and patch signature path, we compute a vulnerability signature at the syntactic level by equation 1. Using vulnerability signature at the syntactic level, we compute a vulnerability signature at the semantic level by equation 2. We compute a patch signature at the syntactic level by equation 4. And we compute patch signature at the semantic level by equation 3, 5, and 6. A text function can be regarded as potentially vulnerable if it matches the vulnerability signature and does not match the patch signature. Guided by the above principle, we take a text function as potentially vulnerable if it satisfies these five conditions. For evaluation, we choose 10 open source projects. We evaluated the accuracy by comparing false positive and false negative. However, it's impossible to emulate all vulnerabilities in a project. To have a fair ground truth, we used all the vulnerabilities that were detected by MVP as the state-of-art approaches in our evaluation. 
We run MVP Redebug and VAD it by using each security patch in a project as an input to search for recurring vulnerabilities in the project itself. The top table shows the accuracy of the, these three approaches. MVP detects 116 potentially vulnerable functions with a precision of 83.6. To evaluate the scalability of MVP, we compare it against the Redebug and Vadi 2. In summary, MVP is slower than Redebug and Vadi, but it still scales to a large system. In the meanwhile, we measure the similarity score between the target functions detected as truly vulnerable by the other approaches and their matched vulnerable functions. The results show that MVP can detect recurring vulnerabilities no matter T is similar or not similar to V, while other approaches tend to find the recurring vulnerabilities only when T is similar to V. This is the end of my talk. Thanks for your attention.